views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I am so excited to be with you today and talk about this amazing topic that we're going to discover with uh, my special guests, Pia and Colin. And before I tell you about how amazing they are, I want to tell you a little bit about the topic that we're going to cover today in today's modern day changing world, because we are learning to live in a new way, in a, with, with, with a new sense of time and uh, move back into our true organic nature in harmony with nature. And so our guests today are going to explain to us um, from, from their perspective and also uh, align us with the spiral of energy of the universe, conscious evolution with Pia Orlean and Colin Baird-Smith. So modern day science has finally confirmed an essential component component of the Palladian teachings. Our universe is not linear, it moves in spirals. Sharing the cosmic wisdom teachings they have received from the Palladian group known as Larkma, <laughs> authors Pia Orlean and Colin Baird Smith reveal a new system of Palladian earth energy astrology centered on the spiraling and interconnected movement of universal and earth energies rather than on time and explain how this new wave of Palladian wisdom can support our human evolution. The authors identify two major spiral patterns that influence us. The 13 spirals of universal energy that reflect cosmic laws and cosmic truth and the 20 spirals of earth energy that reflect how humans experience themselves and each other and their environment. This is so amazing and this is so brand new and now learning to live according to this new system that you're going to, I'm sure, resonate deeply with. But before we get started on this wonderful topic, let me tell you a little bit about Pia and Colin. Pia Orlean is a PhD, and Colin Barrett Smith are co creators of the Re revolutionary New Palladian Earth Energy Calendar and co authors of Palladian Earth Energy Astrology, charting the spirals of consciousness. Conversations with Larkma, a Palladian view of the new reality, and remembering who we are, Larkma's guidance on healing the human condition. Trained in archaeology and anthropology, Colin, who has been accessing parallel realms of love and light since childhood, is an empathic intuitive. Former practic practicing psychologist and author of the Nautilus Gold Award winning book, Sacred Retreat, using natural cycles to recharge your life. Pia is a respected intuitive astrologer. They live in Europe. For more information on their calendar and their books and sessions, we're going to find out how you can get in contact with them. So welcome to the show, Pia and Colin. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. We are celebrating being able to be on this journey and be with you today. We're pleased. We're pleased to be here with you tonight. It's tonight for us and day for you. Um, but we're really happy to be here to be able to discuss this information with you and your listeners. 
Yes, we have a lot. We have a lot to cover. I just want to go right in and and talk about. Uh, let's just let's just welcome the day. Since you you all are already finished with the day, we're just beginning the day. And I've got my beautiful calendar here, and okay. the day is the day is all about remembering. Yes. The day is all about remembering, and you'll tell us a little bit more about about the universal energies of remembering and what all of that means. But I just want to set the tone and and right away um, open up this 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 space that we have to remember what it is that we're going to hear today and what it is that we are communicating here on the call today. So. Um, tell us about what is the basis of your work and how, how did you all get started with all of this? <laughs> we got started because a wonderful loving group of Pleiadians presented themselves to us in our living room and after several weeks of conversation said, will you go public and help us get this message out into the world? So we got started by communicating with star beings. That was our basic start. And they, how, long, how long was that? How long ago was that? Well, this is um, over a decade. I think about 12 yeah, years 12 ago. 12 years? About 12 years ago. Wow. So can you tell our listeners what is the Palladians? Because there's a lot of people that don't know what, you know, if they're listening to this for the first time, what is the Palladians? What star system is this? And, and how, do we, how do we access this? How do we learn more about this? We access it by shutting down all old beliefs of doubt or skepticism and opening our hearts to what feels right. And if it feels like it's true, that's how we access the truth of it. Um, they, they are a group of beings. Um, they call themselves Pleiadians, but they're actually an older civilization than, than actual Pleiadian. They're from a very, very far distant area in the galaxies. And when they introduced themselves to us, they said something really intriguing that we had to ask, what do you mean by this? And what they said was, we are one of six and six of one. And he and I looked at each other and went, well, what does that mean? And they said, we are a, a unified group of six members. We, we retain our six individual personalities, our six individual interests and makeups. However, we do everything in a unified field for the highest good of all. And we said, okay, that makes sense. And so we know them as this group, but also as individuals. And they, they even though they don't come from the Pleiades specifically, they use the star system of the Pleiades as a base because it's close to Earth. It's too far away where they're from to be coming back and forth all the time, but they work from the Pleiades and they have a lot of Pleiadian characteristics. So they just refer to themselves as Pleiadians. But the basic characteristic is love. They are all about love and they don't walk around in physical form because they've done that before with humanity and humans have always said, Oh, look, they're gods. They can do things we can't do. And what they've explained to us at the, is this time is that they do not want humans to think of them as strange or gods or look up to them. All they're here for is to help us to remember who we are and to awaken to our own powers of doing the exact same things they know how to do. They're here to help us evolve. Wonderful, wonderful. And so is that is that the six of one and one of six? Is that Larkma? Yes, yes, and I have to say, you say their name so musically and so beautifully. I'm sure they're pleased with that. They, they, don't, they don't communicate the way we humans do with human languaging verbally. They communicate in a way that they describe as more direct heart to heart. And they use mathematical tones and musical tones in order to communicate. And as Pia just said, you're pronouncing their name the way they introduce themselves to us in a very musical manner. Well, it, I've, list, I've been listening to Pia, um, in, you know, introduce the, the Sunday morning messages. And when she is introducing Larkma, that is where um, I've been trained well in listening. And it, 
it resonates deeply with me. And it just, as soon as you just said that, I just got tears in my eyes, which is, it's just such a loving vibration. It's such, such a loving energy. It is. They, they are, they are an amazing group of energies that have absolutely no judgment. No, they have no reason to doubt who we are as humans. They know who we are. They know that we're divine. They know that we're deep. And so all they do is bring love, as Pia said a few moments ago. And I'd like to add to to that to say that we have no reason to doubt them either. I don't mean Cullen and me, we. I mean the collective we of humanity. All you have to do to know that they're real is listen to their messages and just open your heart. And one thing that's very interesting, they always tell people, don't believe us, trust your heart. If it feels right in your heart, then you know it's true. And we like that about them because they're not a group of people or beings saying, hey, you have to believe what we say. They're just saying we're sharing our perspective. If it resonates with what your heart says is real, you'll know it's the truth, which we feel very respectful. Yes. And so you you uh, channel these, you channel Larkma and then you put it in a recording. And generally it's anywhere between um, one minute to three minutes, you know, anywhere between there. and it, on Sunday mornings here in the U.S. And so let's tell our listeners where they can get your newsletter and so that they can sign up for uh, to receive these messages. Here, here's the thing about them. I just want to set, give a testimonial here. I, I like receiving the newsletter and I love listening to the messages because it's universal. It's, it's, it's a universal message and it is something that it's, it's truth. When you hear it, you know it's true. And it's a, it's a wonderful, loving energy of a friend that is sharing a, a, a perspective, right, of how to, how to approach something, how to deal with something, how, how should we perceive something that would help us, you know, uh, in our evolutionary times right now, right? Yes, yes. and you're, you're using a term that Larkma likes very much. You use the word sharing. They believe that there should be no hierarchy, no, no energy that knows more than any other energy. And that by saying we share this information makes it on an equal footing rather than a teacher and a pupil. It's, it's sharing the information equally across to everyone. And that's really an important part of their message. So the information you ask for your listeners To get the newsletters and to be able to listen to the messages that come every week or participate with our international live calls, which we do monthly, and we have one coming up this Sunday, go to the website, www.larkma.com, and that's spelled L-A-A-R-K-M-A-A.com. And there's a sign-up sheet right there on the front, and you'll be notified once a week when the messages come out and when the international live call is going to occur you'll get a message yeah it's it's really it's they're gorgeous messages and always resonate truth for me and i just feel like you know it is something that i can tune in a lot of times actually uh i feel like i'm so aligned with the messages that it's like already tuned in it's almost like a validation then comes like oh i was perceiving this feeling Mm -hmm. also and it it just again it 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 just makes you feel like you're um you know aligned with that consciousness even more because like we said earlier uh doubt doesn't live in heaven right <laughs> doubt doesn't live there and doubt isn't part of the six and the one and the one and the six because um you know that that is the part that keeps us separate right is the doubt and in this unity consciousness and, and what we are embodying on earth in this consciousness, uh, doubt doesn't live here. But we have to be able to release that doubt and, and, and not, not, um, not play with that anymore and, and move more into the truth. And the truth is that there is, there's nothing to fear and there's nothing separate from us because we're all connected, right? Absolutely. Very well said, yes. Yeah.
Yeah. I, I, like I said, I just felt, you know, when I heard, I heard you all on Dr. Pat's program, because you're part of the transformation talk radio network here. And when I saw you all, I said, Oh my gosh, uh, I have to, I have to contact you and ask you if you would please come on my show because I feel like you're old friends. So what I'm, I'm curious about is the six one and the one six. I have often thought that group energy being part of a group is so important uh working down here on the ground and um like do you feel like we're also doing this the way that the larkmas consciousness is in the six one and the one six do you also feel that we as groups are doing this here on the ground as well I think we're trying to do that on the ground. Yeah. But I think it's an evolutionary process. I think the beginnings of human understanding about this have been based on separation because it's been based on my family, my religion, my tribe, my this, my that, and everything else is over there, not me. And we're beginning to broaden that to understand that a family is spiritually based and it's how we are resonating with the energy of the group rather than the blood of the group or the, the location of the group. We're learning to form community based on energetic resonance now. And that's very much more in alignment with where the Pleiadians do it. Yes. Do you, do you have something you want to add to that, Colin? Well, I, I think one of the, the basic tenets of what they are hoping to help humanity with is to understand that Duality is not really based on them and us or up and down or hot and cold. Duality in the, the bigger cosmic galactic sense is bringing two different parts together to make a greater whole. And I think that's what they're helping us understand, that unity consciousness is bringing everything together, everything, everybody, every energy together so that we can make a better practice of what we're trying to achieve by utilizing our divinity and our love to be the guiding light. Yes. Yes. So basically, um, let's see, like one of the core wounds that we as humanity have uh, experienced, let's say for instance, is the, the energy or the wound betrayal. And so the way that I've cleared betrayal wound out of my physical body construct, because I don't, I don't have that wound and energy within my being anymore, because the opposite of betrayal is trust. Mm -hmm. And so trust uh, betrayal is part of the old world for me. I, I just, I, this is not something that, um, that I that I perceive any longer. So it doesn't matter. Anyone could come into my um, reality, and um, because I only vibrate at an energy of trust, and this this took work to get here, a long 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 hard process to get here. It wasn't it wasn't uh, uh, something that was easy. It was it was a deliberate healing uh, of of this wound and going back to you know 2000 years how long this energy has been around for such a long time and that um in this new day and time that living in trust is what we really truly all want to what, what we all want to be so what you're saying Colin is um is that what you're saying as far as the duality is bringing a, a, another energy in and that is like the energy of trust. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Actually, our friends, Lark, want humans to see them through the color blue. And the color blue, in their representation of the color system that they know, is trust. Blue equals trust to them. It carries the energy of trust. So they they portray themselves as an energy of blue because they want humanity to trust and realize that they're here to help us evolve and to help us move forward in our evolutionary path. And when we present Lartma 
publicly anywhere around the world, inevitably somebody will come up after the presentation and say, I saw blue waves around you too while you were doing this. So people are able to perceive and know that they're there more than just feeling what they feel in their heart. They are able to see a visual representation also once they get into the flow of the energy often. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Um, So going back to this new system, how is this system of astrology different from the Vedic or the Western or Chinese or any other astrological system? Excellent question. It's, it's based solely on energy. It's not based on time or placement. So the energy of the system, another thing that's really, really important and different is in Western and Vedic astrology, as in almost everything else on earth, we have things divided into segments of 12. 12 is a major marking for inches, yards, number of hours in a day or a night, months in a year. 12 is the measurement of humanity. The Pleiadians say that we have eliminated the most important energy, and that is the energy of 13. And with the cosmic energies, which they call universal energies in this system, they list all of the cosmic energies that exist. And the first one is beginning with initiation. That's where everything begins. And when you get to 12, you get to understanding, and which is where everything in our current modality ends. You end at understanding and you go, okay, good, I'm done, finished, next thing. But we're missing the step of integration. We don't take the step back to retreat and integrate what we've learned. So therefore, instead of spiraling up and up and up at every cycle, we go round and round in loops repeating the same thing because we're not allowing the point of integration to occur. So the major difference in this system is that it incorporates the energy of 13 to allow us to integrate everything we learn so we actually do evolve. That's yes. the main- that's that's brilliant. And wouldn't wouldn't you say like right now, as we are really practicing becoming this high vibration energy embodying that this is this is really 2019 is really, you know, integrating everything that we've learned, you know, like integrating trust, really walking it, emitting it, being the trust, yeah. being the yeah. unconditional love, being uh, being that high vibration, being the energies that we've learned about in that spiral, but really actually um, acting already, taking, right? It's a bit like stepping into the energy understanding of being one of six and six of one, because we're beginning to mix with each other. And Cullen and I call this the year of collaboration. We think this is the year that we're beginning to truly share with each other and collaborate in a major way. This, the energy, we're hardly into this new year and we're noticing that worldwide people, organizations, institutions are opening up and collaborating with each other. They're sharing information. They're sharing ideas. And we haven't seen this. 2017 and 18 were a bit of a bumpy road for most of us. We did not see this integration of collaboration that we're experiencing now. So I think you're absolutely right. This is a new, I don't know whether to call it a new platform, a new program, a new paradigm, but 2019 seems to be the year that energies are coming together, hopefully, and I mean hopefully, to prepare for some of the changes that we see that are coming in 2020. Yeah. So the system has the universal energies we talked about, but we didn't talk about the earth energies. Yes energies describe everything about our earthly human experience. They talk about the energy of remembering, about loving, about seeing, about changing. All the energies that are here and the earth energies are talking about our experience and they describe our experience. And what we have come to learn is that each one of these energies we express also. We have an energy that's from the earth and an energy that's from the the universal energies, and we're here to explore what that looks like and join and collaborate with other people, putting all the pieces together to make one harmonic whole. So this is a system that's more about evolution rather than just what are my characteristics or maybe can I predict something, which both Vedic and Western astrology do. This is about true evolution, community, and being able to do something different. Yes. 
Yes. Wow. You know, while, while you're talking, I, I was thinking about that one harmonic hole that you're talking about. The thoughts that came into my mind is how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? Right? It's just so, it's so human, isn't it? It's like, Oh, we want to hurry up and get this done. <laughs> and and uh, we do, don't we? It's like, Oh my gosh, you know, but I really feel like, you know, heaven on earth is here and each body that is walking around realizing and that, that consciousness lives within the heart that, that we are here and that we can have peace on earth for the first time ever in the history of this planet. And that time is now with our awakening, awakened self. And I, I I'm just so grateful that you, um, you know, are, are teaching these principles and, uh, I, I love I love the new sense of time. I want to talk a little bit about that, but let's let's let the listen, listeners know about your book, what the name of it is, and where they can get it. So, would you would you say it, Pia? Sure. It's Pleiadian Earth Energy Astrology. Subtitle is Charting the Spirals of Consciousness, and you can buy it at any major bookstore anywhere in the world. All you have to do is look it up by title. And you can buy it from anybody. It's carried worldwide. It's internationally produced. And while you're there, you, you might want to also get the calendar, the beautiful calendar, the Palladian Earth Energy calendar. You can also get that. And like I said earlier, when we started the show, Pia can, can explain this to us a little bit more. Um, but like on today's energy, when we're tuning into today's energy, these are the Earth energies that you're talking about. Is that right? It's both. The calendar represents both. If you look today and it says March 7, there's yes. a big number there, which is nine. Nine yeah. is the universal energy. And then the lettering beneath it where it says remembering is the earth energy. So there's a combination of each one on each day. And there's a lovely little legend at the back of the calendar that gives you what the universal energies are in just a short sentence and what the earth energies, how they can be used in the higher vibration or the lower vibration. Because on earth, in a planet of duality, we've got two choices. We can take the high road or the low road. So it's mapped out how to notice where you are and what choice do you want to make about where you are. You know what I love? This book, um, I, I, I looked up my information. So I am, I am in alignment with the choosing energy. That's me, So, which is so interesting. The choosing energy, uh, and and everybody can find out what 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 their signature is by looking it up in this book or also on your website, right? Yes, yes, yeah. it's there. And the calendar, if you want the calendar, also can be purchased from the website. That's the easiest place to get it. Okay. Because when we get the orders on the website, we ship them out the very same day. Okay, great. Um, so the uh, the choosing energy, it's so interesting because. When I started really um, walking in earnest on my awakening journey and my ascending journey, I should say, I, I remember um, when my guides gave me the address, the email address, choose a happy life. <laughs> a happy life right? So uh, since that time, I've had that address. So choose a happy life at live.com. And it's, and it's really, it really truly is, um, like you just said, choose the high road. We continuously have to keep choosing the high road, you know, it, with every thought, action, and deed, everything that we're, we're um, doing here, we always have to choose higher and choose greater and choose better than, than, than we're comfortable with, right? Yes. Uh, you're, so. you're, descri you're describing conscious evolution you're describing exactly what larkma is trying to help humanity with making every choice for the highest good of all that that is exactly what you're talking about and it it changes everything when when people begin to lead their lives through that kind of choice they're they're not only making their lives easier happier more filled with grace and flow but that ripples out to every other energy here on this planet, but it also ripples out, out into the universe. It's not just a localized decision-making choice. It affects every energy everywhere. I almost want to say it's karma. Is that? 
Well, I'm not it, sure. in a way, I, I think it's um, logical consequences. Okay. That's karma, because karma has a tendency to feel like, well, it'll catch up with us later. And this is more like it's catching up with us right this minute because it's in it's, a ripple. It's a continual ripple. So it's like it's a like, logical consequence of what you do is going to show up in the next moment and the next moment and the next moment. I think if we added the word instant to karma. Yeah, that would do it. I think that would make great sense. It's it's creating instant karma. Creating instant karma. And that's true. I mean, because here's the thing. You know, when 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 people want to change their reality, when people want to change their reality, when they're not happy with what's going on in their reality, in order, in a way to change it, is to choose to let go. <laughs> to yeah. choose to let go, right? And move into a state of surrender. Right. It's absolutely. Absolutely. Valid step. That, valid step. It's completely necessary. Yes. And then and then when you're living in the state of surrender, then it's like, what is the next step? And then the next step and then the next step. And if you can choose love always as the next step, the, the ease and the freedom, uh, the higher path, always that always the divine plan, always um, for the greater good of all. That is what we want to uh, create here on the planet together. And I think when you were talking earlier about the collaboration that's taking place, I feel that also because I feel like now there's been so many of us that have been doing the inner work all over the planet, so many people awakening. And now it's really time to start building those structures. Uh, mm-hmm. building the structures, collaborating, building the cities of light, the cities of, of love that we want to build uh, in, in the new earth uh, with universal principles, principles that um, are in alignment with the organic nature of who it is that we really are, not who it is that we're not. Absolutely. And this calendar system helps that. Because it does, Pia. Yes. That meeting to surrender, the step to surrender, most people, when they're done with something and they don't like what they have, they instantly want to start into the next thing. And that's an overlay of the pattern of the 12. I'm done with this. Let's go to the next without the integration. The surrender point is the point where you integrate everything that's happened to you so that you can be open for the next step to arrive. And if you keep trying to skip over the surrender just to start over with the next moment, you're not going to get there. You've got to surrender to what's here while choosing love simultaneously and then you're open to something new and wonderful coming your way and would you would you say that that's the 13th step almost yes i think that's a very good way to say absolutely yes Yes. Yeah. yeah that's the 13th step that's that's the the 13 wow so um how can we step away this is a really great question right here because you know so many of us feel chained in the Gregorian system to time and we feel like we don't have enough time and we feel like we're always running out and everyone in the spiral of evolution is chasing around, chasing around, running around, chasing the hamster wheel, running, running around and always coming from the consciousness of not enough. It's not Mm -hmm. enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. How do we step away from scheduling our lives, you know, uh, from from calendars and clocks and, and going away from that system and moving into um, the organic system? Well, the, one of the easiest things to do is to start learning about what the energies represent. If you just simply get the calendar and look at it and think about the one we're talking about now, choosing, oh, this energy brings me choice. It makes me consciously aware that I have a choice in every single moment. That's the gift of this energy. So once you start at least acknowledging what the energies are and when they're present, then you can start making appointments for certain things on certain days. You might have a big decision coming up and you might use the day of choosing to make that decision because you want to feel empowered about your choice. Or you might need to get out of a bad situation. Something's really not working very well and you want to choose the most appropriate time for leaving a job or a relationship or changing it, doing something different with it. And you might choose transcending energy because on a day of transcending energy, you can pull that energy in to help you do what you need to do. So one of the first steps is acknowledging that energy can be appropriate guide for what we want to do rather than just looking at a clock. Uh, 
clock and the calendar have been governing our lives for far too long. The the Gregorian calendar was started in the 14th century. Pope Gregory decided, I don't know if he designed it himself or if his his group of of helpers did, but we've been chained to the Gregorian calendar now for almost 600 years. And then the mechanical clock was invented about 100 years after that. So we've been enslaved and imprisoned by that calendar system and the mechanical clock for all these years, which has taken us away from our natural cycles. The the Industrial Revolution also put its stamp on how people do what they do by making people get up at a certain time, go to work at a certain time, work these long hours. Ancient people didn't live like that. They lived by seasonal changes, day and night, all of the things that were natural cycles. So what what we're trying to help people understand with this new system is we've gotten so out of balance with nature that we're not working at our optimum levels anymore because we're, as you said, running out of time because there's too much to do. There's too much to accomplish. We can't sustain this. It won't continue to work. That's true. And if, if people are really ready, if you're finding yourself and you're listening to this and if you're really exhausted and if you're really ready to live in freedom, time is the perfect place to begin to, uh, in, this, in this new way is because imagine, you know, not being chained to the calendar and not being chained to time, but living more how does it feel for you when you're on the weekend and when you have open space or it's, it's open time for you where you can just creatively flow and listen to what spirit is guiding you and where you're being guided, who you're being guided to call or who, where you're being guided to go out in nature and uh, invited to do. This is really, truly how we are meant to live our lives on, on a regular basis. It's much more balanced. It's much more within the design of who we are. And we're, we're looking at how many things are changing here in Europe where we live. Many countries are dropping the amount of hours that people work per day and per year. And we're applauding this. Some, some people are only working four days a week or they're only working six hours a day instead of the traditional five day a week, eight hour a day system. And We think this is a much more humane way of leading our lives. And companies who institute these policies are discovering that when they have happier, more rested employees, the productivity goes up. So it really makes sense. Yes, yes. So what, what, um, what is the most important message of your book? What do you feel like is the most important message of your book? I would say the most important message of the book is that we are not linear and we have been trained to think that we are linear and to live our lives through a linear illusion. And it's not true. It is an illusion. It's a fabrication. And we need to start looking at the fact that energy is alive and that energy spirals and that we are energy. And if we want to evolve, we need to look at that possibility of evolving in a spiral of energy ourselves because that's who we are. I think I think one of the most important ideas that we're trying to bring to light with this book is that time is really a human construct. Time doesn't exist anywhere else in the universe. Um, Larkma is so happy to explain things about how we humans think that we have we have so sophisticatedly invented everything that's that's technological and that's that's moving forward and they laugh very lovingly saying that we don't really have a grasp of how things really work universally. We have decided as a a community, a society, a culture here that things are the way we say they are, but universally they're not. And I think one of the most important things about the book is to understand that time is a human construct. It doesn't count anywhere else in the universe. And We need to look at it in a different way. And when we do, we'll become cosmic citizens. 
Yes, cosmic citizens, and that's good. That just feels so much better. And when, you know, when you're talking about this whole thing with time, we're not living based chained chained to time anymore. We're 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 only living in the present moment. The present moment that really is where all the gifts lie no matter what is in the present moment right here right now the present moment is the most amazing moment to be alive it's the most best moment there is because it's all there is right it's it's it it's it's the only true measure it's it's really the only true measure and if you stop and think about it for a few minutes if you're living in the past it's all in your head you're only thinking about it because it's not real if you're living in the future it's all in your head. You're only thinking about it because it's not real. But what's happening right now in this moment is the reality. Yes. And in this space, we always have the power to choose. Yes. yes. It's, the only place. Place. it's the it's the only place. place that we have a power to choose. Everything else is vision and we're under a spell. We can't make choices. We are empowered in the now. Yes. Yes. How does this system relate to the Mayan calendar and what role did the Palladians have in both your work and the Mayan calendar, which, by the way, I love very much too. Uh, the Mayan calendar, my, my number, my, my number in the Mayan calendar, I think is number 12, which is interesting that you brought up the number 12. I'm the wind. I'm the wind. Ooh. Yeah. So in the Mayan calendar, the Mayans received their calendar from the Pleiadians and the elders in Guatemala and in some other places in the Mayan lands will actually tell people now they've released the secret that the information about the Mayan calendar was given to them by a group of star beings from the Pleiades. So the Pleiadians came to the Maya trying to introduce to humanity this system of energy 5,000 years ago. And it worked probably quite well in the Mayan culture for a while. And then all of a sudden it got run over by current time issues and current clock issues. And the idea of energy and cycles of energy got pushed aside again. And the Pleiadians themselves were revered as gods rather than teachers or sharers who could help us empower us to understand who we are. This is one reason why Larkma and other Pleiadian groups now don't show themselves because they don't want to be into that role of being a, some, a teacher or a guru. They want to be a friend, someone who is a family who can help you say, look, you can do this too. Let me show you how. You can do this. You can do this. So the, the energies are very, very similar. They're based on the same two cycling spirals the cycle of the universal energy and the cycle of the earth energy. They just call them by different names that are a little bit more complex and a little harder to understand. We have, we have modernized the wisdom of the Mayan calendar in a, a language that's more usable by current human understanding. We've changed the words. We've, we haven't changed the meanings, but we've changed the words so people can more easily understand how to use this ancient system with modern understanding. We also, although Cullen just told the audience, we haven't changed the meaning. We have deepened the meaning. Well, We've given it a lot more depth through the modern Pleiadian understanding that they've been working with us for this last dozen years to understand. So the basic meaning is very, very similar, but the depth and the breadth of it is much more accessible to humans now to be able to work with it in this modern culture. Yes, I, for instance, I was able to look up my information based on my my birth uh, information. You all have created um, Palladian Earth Energy Astrology Charts. Is that right in this book? Yes. Is that what it's called? Is that what yes. it's called? Yes. yes. And so you all have created these charts. And so ed- anyone can go into the into the book and look up their their energy signature, or what would you call it? What would you call that? Energy signature is a perfect way to call it. I think that's exactly right. An energy signature of who you are. One thing that's really important to know, though, Cornelia, yeah. is that our modern Gregorian calendar ends at midnight and starts at midnight. The new day starts at midnight. In the Pleiadian Earth energy system, it's not based on some arbitrary technological assigned time. It's based on nature. 
So the energy changes at sunset wherever you live. Whatever sunset is, that's the energy that shifts from one day to the next. And that's really important point for people to know when they're looking up their energies because they might be thinking if they were born at, oh, I don't know, nine o'clock at night, that they're still in the same day in the Gregorian system, but they're actually not. They're actually the next day. Wow. So that's an interesting thing because I was born at 5, 10 p.m. So um, that would be at sunset pretty close. So yes. I would say the choosing energy is probably pretty true for you. But you might have inklings of other energy coming in as joining you to be part of, oh, and this awareness, too, and this awareness, too. So you'd have choosing, but you also are probably a little bit of an explorer. You like to explore the frontiers. You like to know things new that are coming out. Would that be true of you? Oh, yeah. 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 So that's that part just after sunset, just giving you a little kiss of something extra. Okay. I like that extra kiss. I just want to say one of the things that also resonates deeply in the book after looking up my energy signature is the um, I'm, I'm breathing, I'm breathing. So that's, that's um, what, what it says for me is, is breathing and how important that is, right? The breathing energy. And this uh, is breathing is the basis of our duality here is how we perceive duality. And it's also how we move into unity because we have to have an in-breath, and an out breath to survive. And if we don't have both, we're not complete. But when you talk about breathing, you don't talk about only breathing in or only breathing out. You talk about the unified breathing. So it's the perfect representation of part of your life purpose, which would be to help bring dualistic perspectives into unity. Yes, and it resonates so much because I wrote a book called uh, Peace, the Flip Side to Anger, how I healed my life, my body, um, and how you can too. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, by, by accessing my anger, releasing my anger, finding out what, what was making me angry inside was, I just felt powerless to do anything about what was going on. I was releasing that victim inside of myself. And that's what I was really angry about, not knowing how to communicate that out into the world. And so I was, you know, suppressing the energy in my physical body, which of course causes causes um, harm to the physical body because you don't want to suppress anger inside the physical body, the vessel that houses your spirit. And you certainly don't want to project it out onto uh, your fellow love partner, person, or humanity, because we're all extensions and connections of each other. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And Larkma has taught us a very important principle when talking about not projecting something out on somebody else. They use the Mayan word in Lakesh, which means I am another yourself. And they use that frequently to remind us that we're not separate, we're not different, we're the same but we have different reflections of our energy, just like they're one of six and six of one. And we are to honor the differences that we have and see how we can best harmonize and blend them into the whole. That's our job. Which brings duality into unity. And that's, that, that's what we're here to do, is to simply do that. So many people believe that, that starships will come and rescue us, that, that we will ultimately be rescued and what Larkma says about that is it's our job to mature enough to make the changes where we create heaven on earth here, not, not in some projected other place, but we bring that here through trust, love, compassion, and all of the things that, that we can make the choices to choose. And you, you mentioned that earlier in this interview about making this a heaven here, and we can do that. And I think that's what humanity is moving towards. I think so many people are waking up realizing that we're actually in control of creating that ourselves, not an outside force. We are the ones that will do it. Well, and then, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back to the days of Christ. Uh, you know, Christ said that what, 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 uh, what Christ can do, we can do better. Right. And it's it's this, and it's the savior is already here Uh, within each of us. There is the second coming is you. Yes. Uh, Yes. 
you know, that is, and no one is coming in to save us because we are so fully able and we're so fully capable and we all have the gifts inside everything. We already have everything we need. The only thing that we need to do is be willing to, to, to take it, to, to, to own up, own it. Yes. Yes. That's and, exactly and, right. and that's part of what we think 2019 is going to be showing us is this is the time for people to stand up and speak out. So many people have been, re- they've been reticent to actually speak their truth, to actually share what they know. And we think this is the time in human evolution for more and more people to simply stand up and speak. And we think that's a great part of the collaboration that we're seeing all over the world. Yeah, it's it's so great. Now, are you all writing any other books right now? Is there any other books that you're uh, busy writing? Or We're not writing at the moment. We are busy trying to share this message with the world. But there is another book out there somewhere that we have thought about writing. And we started it a couple of times, but never gotten into it. And that's the transformational tale about our journey how we have been transformed by being on this journey is Lartman's representation. So that it's a possibility, but it's not coming out this year. Okay. Can I, can I say, and I mean this with uh, all the goodness, you, you two have this energy and it's probably because the Lartman's energy is all within you and around you. You, you, you two look otherworldly. You, you look have, have people told you this before. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. So I'm not the only one. Um, yeah, you do. I just feel like, you know, okay, did you did you all just land a ship and come out of the ship? Come on we've over. People, so we've had people in grocery stores come up to us and tell us that. So it's it's not totally unheard. We've heard it before. Yeah. And we appreciate it when people recognize that about us. Yeah, actually, actually when when Larkma introduced themselves to us all those years ago. We might have been a little surprised that it, that it was a Pleiadian group, but Pia and I have been involved in otherworldly experiences since we were children. Um, we, we were the odd ones out. We were the ones having experiences that other people would say, that's not really real, or you can't really be doing that. So we've been we've been involved in unusual activities all of our lives. And we think probably Larkma has been working with us for a very, very long time. And I don't know why they chose the moment they chose, but apparently to them in their non-timing, there must have been a reason why they decided to introduce themselves at that point. So exciting. I'm, I'm so I'm so glad that uh, that that Larkma is with you all and, and bringing that level of consciousness here that you wrote the book and that you're listening, that you have the courage to share the truth, because it's the truth. And this is exactly what the earth is calling for. It's what our humanity is calling for. I'm so honored that, that you all are here. And I, I call you my friends and I'm, I'm grateful to you. And let us tell the audience one more time where they can get the book and where can, they can get the beautiful calendar so everyone can get in alignment. <laughs> the book can be purchased from any bookstore anywhere around the world just by the title. Or you can look up where to purchase it on our website. <clears throat> the calendar is also available on the website, which is www.larkma.com, spelled L-A-A-R-K-M-A-A dot com. And you'll also find Larkma's first two books because this is the third in a trilogy. And the first two books are available on the website also. They don't have to be read in any particular order. So if you're interested in this evolutionary information, please explore it. Wonderful. Any final words for the audience? We've got like 30 seconds. We love you. We love you. And we see you. We see you as our spiritual family also. Oh, wonderful. We love you. Good always. Good always. (laughs) Good always. Good always. always. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm sure I'm going to have you on again and we'll see you. We'll see you out in the field. Thank you so much. Many blessings to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love. 
your call to action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.